The world of insects is changing, but in what way and how fast? Throughout his life, Frederick Ronquist has lived among them. As a boy, he would catch insects one by one. Now he's aiming for something bigger. Frederick wants to find out which insects live where and how many there are in all of Sweden and all of Madagascar. We would like to chart the complete insect fauna, something that is extremely challenging in Sweden and even more so on Madagascar. This is how small this gigantic collection begins. With simple traps, called malaise traps, a Swedish invention from the 1930s. The insects that fly in search their way upward and then fall into the alcohol. And so far, the richness of the insect species is enormous. In Sweden, there are more species of insects than there are of plants. And here, as in Madagascar, insects are crucial to the entire ecosystem. They break down old animals and plants. They are food for others, and they facilitate our food, as, for example, when bees pollinate plants. But what happens to all this, which has worked for millions of years now that human activity is spreading so fast? To begin answering this, Frederick uses Sweden and Madagascar as two test samples that can tell about the world. What happens next there as old forests disappear, as wilderness becomes grazing land, when toxins used against damaging insects also affect the insects that are needed, and when the earth becomes warmer? The last few years, we've seen several reports about dramatic uh, decreases and changes in the insect faunas. I'm personally seriously worried about these reports, these studies. There's a need for increased knowledge of the insect fauna, how it's composed, uh, and the role that insects play in the ecosystem, so we can follow these trends over time. Frederick's ordinary office is at the Swedish Museum of Natural History, far away in Stockholm. But you will often find him here. The middle of Erland is one of Sweden's most insect-rich places. And it's a place that he who inspired Frederick, Frederick's grandfather, probably also would have liked. My grandfather was an engineer, but he collected insects as a hobby. I think uh, my grandfather would really have been fascinated if he knew uh, what I'm doing now, and uh, I think he would really have uh, uh, wanted to be part of this uh, project. He lived a large part of his life in China, in Shanghai. As a child, I heard a lot of uh, stories about his uh, exciting travels around uh, China collecting insects. That was very inspiring, of course. I started, as uh, most kids, uh, building my own uh, small insect uh, collection, killing insects and pinning them. But I soon discovered the joy of rearing uh, insects uh, instead. So I reared a lot of different species of, of caterpillars. In 2003, Frederick had had his dream job as an insect researcher, an entomologist, for several years, when it became time for Frederick to start his first major project, the Swedish Malays Trap Project, where insects were to be collected over a three-year period. We're creating, for the first time, a complete map of the Swedish insect fauna. Now they are setting up new traps in Sweden and on Madagascar. And there, the work is extremely demanding. The roads are often completely impassable. 
The number of insects is astronomical. But Frederick and all of his colleagues have made up their minds to succeed. As measurements in two places as vastly different as Madagascar and Sweden will give a new insight into the world of insects. But uh, it takes such a long time to process the material. One by one. This is the way insects have been sorted since Frederick's grandfather's time. If you want to un understand the entire fauna and how it changes over time, we need new methods that allow us to process that type of material much faster. And those methods we have now. Hundreds of insects can now be put in the same liquid. This fluid releases their DNA. And the samples are processed until they are ready to be sent to the Sci Life Lab in Solna, where robots can sequence and find the genetic fingerprint of each insect. With this technique, 20 million insects will be analyzed in just six months. And there's more to it, because on the outside and inside of many insects live microorganisms, bacteria, and fungi. They will also be mapped. The project will thus both be able to discover tens of thousands of new species of insects while also describing their accompanying microorganisms. This will give a fast and completely unique mapping of the world of insects. To, in the future, give Frederick the possibility of understanding how we change the world we are living in today. It is ultimately about the survival of, of humankind.